face of the Chief Petty Officer's mess. Chief Petty Officer Robinson, United States. Thank you. CSO, CMC, LCS Squad and One. My family. <laughs> Thank you for everything. I wasn't expecting all of this today. My, ter my, mil my retirement, it came as a surprise to some of you. And several did not uh, realize that I was going to retire. <clears throat> some of you didn't even know I had 24 years. Just like uh, Chief Will Dick say, I was just wanted to slide out and just fade away. I didn't really want to have a ceremony at first. But after I submitted my paperwork, chain of command, every sailor that I uh, told that I was committed to retire, that uh, this was it for me. They said, no, Chief, you got to do something. You got to do something for you. You can't just walk out. That's why I'm here today. I'm here for those sailors and all other people, my family, my sister, my mom, CMC, all of us to pull me to the side and say, hey, think about your career. Think about all the things that, uh, that you have done. Take a look back and think about your whole entire career, all the people you touched. And as I went back to my first ship, USS Seattle, AOE-3, all the way back to 1990, 1991, coming out of a school boot camp, I thought about the change. I thought about all the sailors that left the military due to all the changes that were coming in. A lot of them didn't like uh, what was happening. Back then, I was on an all-male ship, no females, very hardcore, a lot of old, crusty uh, BTs, HTs. It was rough, it was hard work. I'm a young farm, just coming in. The first person that I saw was HTC. James White, excuse me, Senior Chief James White. He picked me up at the airport, looked at my orders, looked me in the eye. He said that, uh, young man, only thing I see on this is your name. That's all I know is your name. But just looking at you, looking at your appearance, Seeing how you carry yourself, you can go a long ways in the Navy. He said, look, there's something that you gotta do. Number one, you gotta put God in the head of your life. And I know you already have that. He said, number two, you gotta be on time. And he said, I can tell you already know that just by the look in your eye. Number three, when you get to the ship, Get your quals done. Always stay one step ahead of everyone else. And that's what he told me. At that time, I was, I was just a fireman. And every once in a while, I would see C.H.E. Chief White. And as I walked through the ship, going to the galley, doing my daily routines, and he always, always gave me the thumbs up. Said, M.F. and Robinson, you're on top of things. You're ahead of the game. Keep up the hard work. And our motto on the Seattle back then in 1991 was can do. It was a positive attitude. Like you could do anything, you could do all things. So at that time, I had uh, a mentor, EM3, Carlos, Coco, Cobra. My first class was EM1 and Marike. My chief was EMC Woody. They all called me in once I got to the ship, gave me their expectations, 
told me the rules, regulations. They said, it's all up to you. It's all about decisions. And if you don't make the right decision, you can get in a lot of trouble. Your career could end right away. Not only that, then in engineering, if you make one mistake, you could take out the whole ship. So you gotta be on top of your game. You gotta know everything. You gotta know about the equipment, how everything works, how it functions, where it's located. So you got a lot to learn. Although you're a fireman, you gotta set goals. And even though you're a fireman right now, we're all leaving. You're the next guy up. You're the one that's gonna take over after we're gone. I took all those words to heart. And whenever I had opportunity, when I finished my job, I would run and find something else to do. I would go to another shop and work on their quads, ask them if I could help and do whatever. And I just kept that going throughout my whole career. And needless to say, within four years, when I got ready to, uh, to transfer, I wasn't a fireman anymore. My chief told me, he said, if you leave the ship less than when you came, you fell. You don't want to do that. So when I left to Seattle, it was very hard to leave. I was attached to the crew. I was an E-5, second class petty officer. Qualified all the way up, had a surface warfare. On top of the game, Rick in a suit. I was AJ squared away. And that goes all the way back to the first chief. Senior Chief James White, to my mentor, M3 Carlos Coco Colbert, my first class, M1 Enrique, and also to Chief Woody. They trained me up the right way, they laid the foundation for me, and they made sure that I stayed on track. Although back then, in the early 90s, it was a norm to smoke. It was a norm to drink. So when I went around the old guys, the, the salty guys that had been in for a while, I'm quiet, short, not loud. <laughs> and they would always, you know, rebel and get very loud and shout and do all kind of crazy stuff, trying to, you know, intimidate me, scare me. But I stuck to my ground. And as the years went on, we all became closer and closer. They did not change me. And even to today, I still don't drink. I still don't smoke. But I look at the Navy from 1990 and 1991 up until now, all those things that we used to do back then, we can't do anymore. You're not allowed to smoke in your workspaces. Drinking is uh, kind of bad now if you have an alcohol-related incident. Back then, it didn't matter, you know. That was a requirement, really, to, to get advantage. <laughs> if you didn't have a DUI, and what's wrong with this guy? My girl. So if you ask one of the master teams, you know, they'll tell you. That was a thing to do, get in a fight, come to work with sunglasses on, black eye. But we can't do any of that stuff anymore. We're all professionals. And I think one reason why it goes back to the Sailor's Creed that came in the uh, 1995, 96 time frame. We started bringing that back and, and saying the Sailor's Creed, the sailors started actually saying that at quarters every day, not only saying it, but living that creed, doing those words, becoming ambassadors. So over the years, the Navy's model, our concept, how we present ourselves, it was very bad on the East Coast. I, I've been fortunate to serve 10 years on the East Coast. I served on the West Coast, overseas. But during that time frame, you would see sailors passed out in the yards, uh, settling back to the ship, all kinds of negative images. But today, all of that's gone. We're a very positive force. We're on top in just about 
every category when it comes to organizational management skills, how we conduct business, education, compared to all the other military branches, the Navy is up here, very, very, very top. And I commend that to the sailors today, keeping that heritage and maintaining the standard. I did have a script wrote out, but as you can see, I just kind of just threw it away and just went from what I know. I want to thank my wife, Michelle. We've been married for four years, and my wife is my spark. <laughs> she gives me the energy, and if I need something, even though I can't get the hug, I can call.